Welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast, providing you with insightful commentary and developments in the world of healthcare leadership. To learn more, visit ACHE.org. And without further ado, your host. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by LifePoint Rehabilitation. Kindred Rehabilitation is now LifePoint Rehabilitation. The specialized partnership expertise you trust from Kindred has been expanded through LifePoint's leading diversified care network. To learn how we can help you meet the growing rehabilitation need in your community, visit lifepointrehabilitation.net. All right, we have two guests with us today. We have Sanjeet Sodi, the CEO at Kaiser Permanente in Vacaville, California, and Dorian Williams, the Assistant Vice President of Operations at West Virginia University of Medicine in Parkersburg. They are also 2022 Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program Scholars. That's ACHE's premier executive development program for diverse healthcare leaders since 2014. Sanjeet has a bachelor's degree in accounting and a master of business administration from California State University, Fullerton, and she is a fellow of ACHE. Playing a part in making high-quality healthcare accessible and affordable is a burning ambition for her, and she has served Kaiser Permanente members and communities for the past 21 years, working across two California regions and Kaiser's national program office. Dorian received both his undergraduate and graduate degrees from Marshall University, and he is a fellow of ACHE. As Assistant Vice President of Operations at WVU Medicine Camden Clark Medical Center, he is responsible for construction management, engineering, safety management, security, environmental services, valet services, linen services, real estate, food, and nutrition services. All right, with that introduction, let's hear from Dorian and Sanjeet about their careers and the Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program. With that, welcome to the Executive Podcast. Pleasure to have you both with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's thank hear a little bit about us. your backgrounds. Um, what drew you both to healthcare? So, Dorian, we'll start with you. I think it's a couple of things that drew me to healthcare. One, um, I had a friend in high school that I, uh, I was very close with. Her mother was the CNO of a hospital. She's now CEO of Methodist North, uh, now Ms. Florence Jones. And the second is just when I got out of college, uh, I worked, uh, you know, I was expecting to have a big job. Uh, I thought so when I had my master's degree, but I got a management training position and it actually ended up being a CNA for about four months. So I think that shaped my leadership style. I saw what goes into everything. I saw what's needed and it showed me a different perspective on care. Then the third thing for me was, uh, I think uh, 2011, uh, my wife, we were having our first child and she was diagnosed with stage two cancer. So um, that was an eye-opening experience for me. You know, you see it from the other side and when it affects you, it becomes different. So uh, that shaped me in healthcare. Made me, I had a passive healthcare. You have to have a passion for this business. But uh, that, that made my heart grow more when, it, when I saw it firsthand at different stages and then when it impacted me directly. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, Sanjeet, how about you? What was your journey like to healthcare? Yeah, thank you, Eric, for that question. Uh, my journey into healthcare was purely random, but now it's purpose-driven. Um, after I finished my degree in accounting, I was sure that I didn't want to be a CPA. Kaiser was my second job out of college while I was still pursuing my MBA and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. But I got recruited. I came into Kaiser as a financial analyst. And uh, within a few years of learning and growing, you know, taking on more responsibilities through the years, I was uh, on a supervisory and management track. And on a personal level, uh, at the same time, I got married to the man of my dreams. And just as we thought that we had all our carefully laid out plans working, coming along just fine. My husband, who was 29 years of age at the time, was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure. And from high blood pressure, a genetic condition that was that went undetected and untreated for a very long period of time. So this was around the same time frame when ACA was also being discussed. And as I was emotionally coming to grips with uh, this new reality of our life, I realized how critical having health insurance was and access to really quality health care was especially a, also being in an integrated system, I just really realized the benefit of being with Kaiser. But most importantly, my husband and I could focus on his life-saving treatments without having to worry about anything else. And, and then there were folks out there who uh, were not so lucky and who were making hard choices between medicines, between health insurance and food and shelter. And that personal setback really defined my career trajectory. 
and my commitment to healthcare. I wanted to play my part in helping making quality healthcare affordable, accessible, with best service possible to patients when they are the most vulnerable. I felt I needed to get closer to the front lines where care is delivered, and that piqued my interest into learning more about hospital operations, moving away from regional role um, as a finance leader, but moving into hospital um, operations, first as a hospital CFO, and I've finally now transitioned into hospital chief operating officer. Yeah, both your journeys, very personal touches there. And you mentioned purpose, you mentioned passion. Let's talk a little about purpose now. Um, We talk a lot about DEI on the show, and we know there are tons of reasons for organizations to increase diversity, equity, and inclusion in their executive leadership ranks. As I mentioned, go back and listen to previous episodes to hear some of these conversations. But Sanjeet, curious, can you talk a little bit about why this is so important in healthcare? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, data obviously shows the benefits of DEI in terms of not only greater innovation, recruiting top talent, uh, boosting employee engagement, improving a brand's image for any organization and in any business sector. But the impact of DEI in healthcare is beyond critical. I think it literally saves lives. I strongly believe that diversity, especially in governance and leadership positions in healthcare, allows for better representation of the diverse communities and patient population. And most importantly, that it will lead lead towards reduction in healthcare disparities, the challenge that we're all trying to solve. A diverse staff helps patients from underrepresented backgrounds feel more comfortable during their doctor visits and their hospital stays. DEI strategies, when effectively deployed, not only improve communication, increase patient satisfaction, but ultimately deliver the high quality care we all want. So having a healthy, a healthcare workforce that reflects the community in not only race, in ethnicity, in age, in gender, in sexual orientation, immigration status, physical disability, and social economic diversity ultimately raises the overall health of the community it serves. Thank you for that answer. Just want to remind our listeners that this episode is brought to you by LifePoint Rehabilitation. Kindred Rehabilitation is now LifePoint Rehabilitation. The specialized partnership expertise you trust from Kindred has been expanded through LifePoint's leading diversified care network. To learn how we can help you meet the growing rehabilitation need in your community, please visit lifepointrehabilitation.net. All right, Dorian, let's talk about, you know, we can talk about DEI, but let's talk about putting it into action, putting it into work. What are some ways healthcare leaders can help develop that more inclusive, equitable culture within their organizations? One thing, I think it's a couple of things, but I think one, we had to take an honest, hard look at our organizations and our programs and, and review it and look at it and see what works and what, and what doesn't work. And, you know, with DEI, we have to make sure we have the executive backing and we have to have, we have, we have to make sure we have the financial backing. Because you read stories, I read an article yesterday that the burnout of DEI professionals and different things like that. But you have to have succession plans. You have to have programs. And I think one of the things about this is communication is a big part of it. So every organization has diversity. It's, even if it's diversity of thought, but do we have inclusion? So one of the things I think that we need to do a better job at, and I've seen some organizations that do it very well. I've seen some that start their journey. W Medicine just hired a diversity officer. We're on our journey. Um, Albert Wright is committed to that. And my local CEO, Steve Altmiller, hey, this is not a checkbox item. This means this is, this is a priority for you. So what I mean by communication is that what is the, uh, what does it stand for? What does it mean to you? You know, we have to have those conversations. We have to have those, those advisory boards, those councils. Uh, and then first we define that because I think it, it could, it, these, these topics, we're talking about things of all natures. You know, most people think when you hear the, uh, the term, you think about race only. It's so much bigger. Just like Sanji said, it's so much bigger than that. So we're talking about a lot of uncomfortable conversations and sometimes we're trying to force it and make it, uh, you know, here we're doing DEI, let's put this person over here. And that's, that's a checkbox item, checkbox item. So we, there's a term that my CEO needs to slow is fast. We need to have slow communication to define, you know, make sure everyone understands why we're doing 
And once they do that, we understand why we're doing it and how it impacts others. Then we can add on to other things, you know, the different sectors of it, different things that continues. This is a continuous journey. This is nothing I know has popped up a lot lately, the last few years, um, you know, and we met, we made a lot of uh, um, headway, but we have a long journey to go. So I think, you know, being practical of just reviewing what we have, you know, having a uh, great delivery on our communication and having the executive back. That's the biggest part we have to have because what, what's important to CEO is important to everyone. You know, before we move on, do want to talk a little bit about the executive diversity program. It's part of the Thomas C. Dolan diversity program. It does provide education, mentoring, and networking experiences to prepare diverse leaders for higher level positions in hospitals, health systems, uh, other healthcare organizations. It does consist of the executive, executive diversity program, which both of you are scholars of and the career accelerator program. So why did you both apply for the executive diversity program? And I guess, what were your goals for it, Dorian? Let's start with you. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of ACHE, obviously. You know, I'm a fellow. I've been in different programs. But, it, you know, I want to take my career to the next level. And, and this is the program that can assist with that. But I also, I want to get on that, that journey to professionals that are doing it currently. Like Sanji, she was a CFO when we started. And by the time we finished, she's a COO. So, you know, right there, we talked about journeys. We all had different aspects. We all had different perspectives on different things. So, you know, it, it was a breath of fresh air for me also to see people that while you may not have the same journey, you're, you have the same uh, end goal. And how do you navigate that? There's things I've been through that it doesn't matter about race or anything like that, that we can help each other. So the program was uh, working simultaneous, simultaneously with it, with the executive program also. So it was a lot of networking opportunities, a lot of good feedback, a lot of great speakers um, in that program. So just an overall really good experience for my career. And just for, you know, just in it, take my career aside. It was a great learning experience for me overall. Love to hear that. Sanjeet, how about you? Uh, why did you apply for the executive diversity program? You know, being an immigrant woman of color with an ethnic sounding name, I've been very cognizant of the perception people form of me even before they've met or worked with me. Um, so as such, to continue my passion, my purpose, and moving up the leadership ranks with the intent of making a broader impact on the health and well-being of communities um, that I serve, I've had to constantly find strength in myself to amplify my voice and ensure that I'm heard. And over the years, I've realized that being different, especially in healthcare, is so also such a huge advantage and a responsibility to use it to further the conversation and action around diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. As I read and heard about the Dolan Executive Diversity Program, I was very excited to apply because I wanted to learn from other trailblazing seasoned leaders that have gone through this program before me, but leaders with me and gain confidence and polish my skills. I believe that becoming a Dolan Diversity Scholar really helped accelerate my career advancement so I could purposely lead purposefully lead and champion the total health needs of the communities. But I also hope that it provides an inspiration to the next generation of diverse candidates like me, who um, may have limited awareness of ACHG, but they are looking to make a difference. And this program really um, did that for, for myself and my 12 other scholars. You know, both of you are ACHE fellows and Sanjeet, you just became a fellow here in uh, last year in 2022. So congratulations. And we'd love to hear more about, you know, your fellow journeys as well, how ACHE played a role. So Sanjeet, if you can start this conversation, um, just tell us about your ACHE journey. That is a fantastic question. As you can see from my bio, my entire healthcare career has been with Kaiser Permanente and mostly in health plan and hospital finance. So I was looking to transition to operations. I realized that I needed to broaden my network and my understanding of healthcare sector beyond Kaiser. And to be honest, I had limited knowledge of ACHG as not a, not a lot of leaders or mentors in my organization really talked about it. Uh, but that changed up two years ago when, um, almost two years ago when Carry On Please who was then the chair of ACH, joined um, and became president of Kaiser Northern California. That's when I read more about ACHG and I was fascinated about the FOTG credentials, which I now believe 
is a badge of honor for all healthcare leaders that want to demonstrate and not only their competency, but also their commitment, lifelong commitment to change and improvement. And that was the journey I was on. So I felt that my personal values were reflected in ACHG mission, vision, and values. I became a member in mid-2021 and started preparing right away to sit for my fellow exam, carefully planning my courses to complete all my uh, required education credits and sit for my exam, but I qualified for it. I did take the uh, Board of Governors prep course that was offered by ACHG, found it very helpful, as well as the prep courses that was offered by our local Cal chapter, the California Association of Healthcare Leaders chapter. I attended my first Congress in 2022, and that experience blew me away. I truly enjoyed networking, but especially loved the sessions on you know, various current critical issues that face us all healthcare leaders and how um, everyone is dealing with it. And, uh, and again, that was where I uh, became aware of the Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program. And as soon as I achieved my one-year anniversary, I submitted my application sat for the exam and so happy to say that I passed on my first go and I proudly wear my fellow certification now. Well, congratulations on that. Dorian, uh, you know, you touched on your journey a little bit earlier, but love for you to expand on um, just your journey with ACHE. Yeah, um, I was in the senior executive program before, and then I got into the executive, uh, Thomas Dole executive diversity program. So I've been a fellow for over three years now. And uh, some of my mentors, Ray C, Yolanda Hearn, of different people would tell me, you have to get the certification. You have to be board certified. It opens up doors. For you. you know, it is a badge of honor. It's something I'm very proud of. Probably, you know, one of my most, if not proudest professional powers, because a lot of study time went in it. A lot of study time went in it, a lot of different things, a lot of late night meetings. Because uh, my wife was questioning me the night before we were doing tests. I was in the car trying to go over stuff. So it means so much to me on that. So uh, it, it has opened doors for me. But, you know, this is touching on something Sanji said earlier about the tech diversity program. But when I put that behind my name now, and even being a part of this program, just say from LinkedIn, I've had people, well, they've reached out to me about the program. They've reached out to me about different things because, you know, the representation matters because that's what this program is all about. So when you see individuals that look like you accomplishing these things that, you know, I've gotten all kind of friend requests and, and have uh, helped people in different areas of the United States that I never thought. And I like, I'm kind of saying, well, it's nice of me. You know, I appreciate it. You know, I never would have thought that, but. You know, the, the program has meant so much to me. I recommend it to everyone. I have a couple of my leaders. Every director I have under me now is a part of ACHG. Um, I was in the Georgia chapter for six years. Uh, it's heavily involved down there. We have a heavily involved uh, chapter there. And so we're trying to bring it up to West Virginia. You know, ACHG has so many benefits, just the network and loan, the resource, the educational opportunities. Everyone's not going to be a CEO, CFO, CEO. That's okay. That's okay if you can be there, but you can be the best version of yourself. And I think ACHE's programs allows you to be, allows you to be that. So, you know, I'm, I have nothing but praises to say about ACHE. Some of the, the mentors I have that have made the biggest impact in my life. It was one guy recently I've met only one time. He was at an ACHE event uh, in Georgia. We touched base. We kept in contact for probably five, six years now. And he's had a probably bigger impact. So the lifelong relationships that you want to make has an incredible impact. Well, as we close this conversation out, let our listeners know applications are being accepted for the 2023 Thomas C. Dolan Diversity Programs. What advice uh, do the both of you have for the potential applicants and for new scholars who want to get the most out of their program experience? And Dorian, you're on a roll. So let's start with you. <laughs> um, I think that do it. Simply do it. Uh, they have great program directors, Naomi Tolbert. She's great. Anita, they're, they're down to earth. They work with you. They work with you even after the program's out. You know, uh, you build connection. You know, I, I have several members of our class, and I feel like we're all close in some nature. And one of the things for me, I said, some of the ones that I, I didn't feel like I, I was as close to as I wanted to be, because I'm, I'm a firm believer in building authentic their relationships. You know, we go on room network, but, you know, you need to build those authentic their relationships. And, and that's what I feel like we, we were texting the other day. There was a picture came up. We were all texting saying how everybody's doing and stuff like that. So I would say do it, you know, the benefits you get out of it, the learn opportunities, 
the tutelage, and just the experience has always been great. So I would advise anybody, if you have a chance to do this program, do it. If you, Even if it's another program, do it. You know, ACHE is where you want to be. Sandy, how about you? <laughs> Any advice for potential I, applicants? Yeah, I would strongly encourage anyone considering applying to just apply. Especially as a diverse leader, you know, through our career journeys, we've had plenty of unique experiences and feelings with being sometimes the only diverse seat on the table and trying to bring about a cultural perspective and challenge the established ways um, of providing services. So it's um, it not, a, you know, a, those experiences and feelings that a lot of our peers uh, understand. And um, what I've come to know as well, uh, that the delivery of this uh, uh, program, the Dolan Diversity Program, has matured over the years with feedback from past scholars, et cetera. So really thank the ACHE leadership for revamping it to allow the Dolan scholars to engage one full day with free flowing as well as structured dialogue um, on our leadership journeys and experiences. And it gave us, um, us uh, you know, diverse leaders an avenue to really voice our innermost feelings um, from our journey, trying to move full ahead in our organizations and our careers and, and feeling validated um, on, on these experiences, these shared experiences. Uh, but most importantly, finding strength in each other, celebrating our diversity, and then really having dialogue about how to overcome and continue moving forward. So I've, I, I really felt that I found my tribe and, and these diverse scholar, uh, scholars are my tribe and felt so supported. Uh, again, uh, Dorian gave a shout out. I absolutely want to give a shout out to Anita Halverson and Naomi Tal Talbert. They were so instrumental in making this program um, the success that we felt uh, we all are so connected and uh, we have our own chat group and uh, um, reach out to each other for assistance and support. So this program is once in a lifetime opportunity, full of learning through site visits, mentorship. Can't speak enough uh, and gratitude for the mentor that I was assigned, that I was matched with. Um, coaching and dialogue and networking with healthcare leaders from across the country. So don't think twice, go for it and give it your all. All right. You've been listening to Sanjeet Sodhi and Dorian Williams. They are two of the 2022 Thomas C. Dolan Diversity Program Scholars. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank Thanks. you for having us. All right. ACHE, as we mentioned, is accepting applications for the 2023 Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program and the Career Accelerator Program. You can visit ache.org slash diversity programs for more applications are due April 10th, 2023. And one more more to thanks for LifePoint Rehabilitation. Kindred Rehabilitation is now LifePoint Rehabilitation. The specialized partnership expertise you trust from Kindred has been expanded through LifePoint's leading diversified care network. To learn how we can help you meet the growing rehabilitation need in your community, visit lifepointrehabilitation.net. And we thank you so much for listening today. We'll, of course, catch you next time right here on the Healthcare Executive Podcast from ACHE. This has been the Healthcare Executive Podcast, brought to you by the American College of Healthcare Executives. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider rating and reviewing on iTunes or your podcasting app of choice. And for more information, find us online at ache.org.